it's raining. In fact, the weather forecast calls for massive storms. We couldn't have known it at the time, but these same storms would produce tornadoes that would devastate parts of Kentucky. Thankfully, we've made the call to divert from our original plan in the upstate of South Carolina, and instead head south, to a place where the storms have already passed through, in hopes of finding a drier weekend. What we found instead was mud, a lot of mud. All right, this is where the adventure begins. yippee ki yay I'm Matt Brody, and this is Simply Must Go. I think it's gonna be muddy. <laughs> Woo! We're just caked in mud now. After getting aired down, it was time to really get the adventure going. All right, guys, we are back on the scar. This time we are in Francis Marion National Forest. It's an overcast, kind of rainy weekend. We were trying to get away from a lot heavier rain in the upstate, so we decided to do this section of the scar. Uh, and we're, I hope we're gonna have a blast. This time we've got Beave again. We also have our buddy Brian and his FJ. So it should be a really fun trip and I'm looking forward to it. We're back on the scar, but this time we're on the coastal region of South Carolina in an area known as the Francis Marion National Forest. The scar is an 1100 mile loop around South Carolina that stretches from the mountains to the sea and it's a trail that includes pavement, gravel, sand, dirt, and mud. And boy, did we find the mud. I'm still in a Jeep, but this time I've swapped out the YJ for my newer stock 2018 JKU Rubicon. This will be only the second time I've taken the JKU overlanding, but I'm still pulling my tiny camper company trailer and rooftop tent. There's a lot of advantages to having the JKU on the trails, but one major disadvantage is I no longer have a winch on my rig. And in these slick, soupy, and swampy conditions, that might be a decision I'll regret. Yeah, so as you can see, I'm the lone Jeep in a group of Toyotas now. <laughs> so I guess I'm gonna have to be pulling them out of the mud. <laughs> <laughs> oh, the irony of that statement is probably gonna show itself later. <laughs> You see, at heart, we are just five-year-old boys who still like to play in the mud. That was, that was awesome. It was totally cool. And I'm, we're just caked in mud now. This trip, we wanted to learn from our past mistakes and make sure we weren't rushing ourselves trying to drive too far or finding campsites in the dark. So we gave ourselves three days to push through and explore every bit of the Francis Marion National Forest that we could. What is it they say? When men make plans, God laughs. Well, things certainly didn't go as we planned. It's getting a little soupy out here. Woo oh yeah. So the Francis Marion National Forest is very flat and it's coastal. So it's basically swampland, uh, which if you're familiar with the character Francis Marion, uh, which this is named after, his nickname during the Revolutionary War was the Swamp Fox. So this whole land area is very swampy and because it's been raining recently, all of these dirt sandy roads are now just very slushy and soupy and muddy uh, and it's a blast. We'd had a long day exploring the scar and the side roads and trails, but two things were becoming very clear. First, this was hunting season and nearly every road, turnaround, and dead end, there was someone parked hunting in the area. Second, we hadn't come across a single campsite, something that did not bode well for our chances now that it was late afternoon and sunset was just around the corner. We'd hoped to have scouted several sites and be setting up camp in our choice pick by now, but we found ourselves scrambling to find possible campsites and scouring maps for a solution. So finding dispersed camping in the Francis Mary National Forest is proving to be harder than we thought. There just doesn't seem to be a lot of places where we can legitimately do 
like camping, right? We could do ground tents, but no vehicles, that kind of thing. So um, we've we've looked at the map. Uh, so we've looked at a couple of spots uh, where we think there might be some options. And then worst case scenario is there's a, uh, a forestry campsite that we can head to. So if it gets dark, that's our plan is we'll just head there as a, as a backup. But right now we're gonna, we're gonna see if we can go to some different spots and find a place to go. Even the two sites we had in our back pocket as a last resort were a bust. The first was literally on the paved road and was completely flooded. The second turned out to be a tent city for people hiking the Palmetto Trail. Neither one would work for us tonight. So this area we're in, uh, the Palmetto Trail, it's a walking trail, goes through the state, runs, kind of weaves in and out of this area we're in. We just found like a trailhead slash camping area for the, for the hikers, except for, it looks like there's people living here. This is quite funny. It may not be obvious on camera, but in person, it's obvious they've, they've been here for a while. Okay, I'm ready to roll. We decided to take a huge gamble and push deeper into Francis Marion, even as the sun was setting. Heading into the swamp at night with this much water and mud on the trails was bad enough, but most of all of the possible locations we were hoping for looked like they were down tight, unmaintained sections where turning around in my Jeep and trailer could become a nightmare. Alrighty then, <laughs> Yeah, that's a deep one. I was gonna film and then Beef hit me with the lights, it's too bright can't even oh my gosh hang on I have to change all my settings <laughs> all right so it is it is dark as you can tell and I'm being illuminated by uh, by Beeb's lights here but um, we are we are deep in a trail that we're hoping leads to a campsite but if it doesn't it's okay because this is a very cool trail especially in the dark so it's kind of fun we're gonna check this out real quick The deep hole right there. We pushed through the trails in the dark, passing a number of hunting vehicles along the way. But eventually our perseverance paid off and the trail opened into a big enough area to circle the rigs and set up camp. I mean, it certainly could. All right, so I think I think we found camp. This this was a long, unused well, not unused, but lightly used road. No one's been down this in a while, uh, or very few people have. And uh, and it opens up into this little clearing here uh, that we can use for camp. So we'll probably just circle the vehicles and do that, and it'll. Uh, It'll be awesome. I think this will be a great spot for tonight. It's been an adventure getting here for sure, but we're going to get all circled up, get camp set up, and then, uh, yeah, I think, uh, I think this is our home for the night. All right, so camp is set up. 
We are making dinner. I'm making some bacon. Beeb's making some burgers. And that's what we're having for dinner. But I'm super pumped about this because my inner fat kid is, is all over these mint Oreos. They're like thin mints, only Oreos. And that's, my, yeah, my inner fat kid's real happy. We keep getting lucky. Listen, by lucky, I mean go watch the last couple of videos because every time we try to find a camp spot and we can't, we end up down some sketchy trail and we find something really cool. Uh, no one's clearly been down this trail in quite a while and uh, it's pretty cool and this is fantastic. So I'm excited about it. This, my awning from uh, Iron Man 4x4, came with a 12 volt cigarette adapter and well quite frankly it was a pain not because it was bad but the awning doesn't reach to a 12 volt so I had to have a battery here which meant usually I had to take out the fridge so that I could run the fridge and the battery near the uh, the awning so that I could run the awning as well but what I did was I took an adapter that I got that goes from uh, the 12 volt to USB and then I just cut it and I hardwired it so now I can run my whole awning off of one of these little uh, battery packs they are like solar powered and stuff. They're like super cheap, but it'll run the awning just fine. And I don't have to have anything else around here if I don't want it. And that makes me really happy. With the day behind us, we settled into camp. As we talked and laughed over the fire, we had the sense that tomorrow would be another great adventure. But we had no way of knowing how big it would really be. In fact, it would end up being so epic in so many ways that it requires its own video. So hit the like button and subscribe, because you're not going to want to miss what's next, who got stuck, and where we ended up going. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next episode. I don't think you want to get stuck in that. Some of the Civil War sites. <laughs> We're not gonna go around it. <laughs> All of Brian's Everything. camping gear is from the 70s, and it's amazing. It's like it the still best works. Stuff. It's great. Stainless. That's, that is Look, he's got like the original Coleman light. <laughs>